Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are doing something that's fun, creative, and relaxing. We are doing some abstract landscapes, so let's do it. Okay, so for the materials that I'm using today, I'm using Arches watercolor paper, my Windsor Newton professional watercolors, and I have my Princeton snap brush in a size 12, I believe, and I'm also using this flat mop brush. You don't have to have one of these. Um, I'm just using it so I can cover more ground, but you can just use the biggest brush you have. So to start, I am creating a wet background. For these paintings, we're gonna be doing a lot of wet on wet. So you wanna make sure that you are wetting the background in an uneven kind of fun, you know, non-specific shape. And just make sure that it's not dripping off of the paper. You want a nice light sheen. Um, if you were to tilt your paper and you see a little bit of a shine and that's how you know you have enough water. Then you're gonna go in with a darker color. Here I'm using Payne's Gray and I'm just randomly kind of placing it um, in no specific places, if that makes sense. Um, a little bit darker towards the top, but I'm just going back and forth and placing it, leaving some white space for some clouded area. I'm also creating the horizon line and I'm putting some darker clouds towards the bottom. And I just keep on, you know, putting some of that darker paint places. You wanna just be really loose with it. Let the watercolor bleed and do its thing adding a little bit of lighter blue. Whatever blue you have works. Just creating that horizon line. Now I'm taking some green and I'm just gonna go from the bottom up and I'm gonna start putting in that grass. Again, same kind of technique, nothing specific. Meeting where that horizon line is with the green and the blue, but not necessarily touching. We will make it sharper later and I'm just putting in some lighter green. You can put in different types of green and just let them bleed. You want it to be like an abstract kind of free feeling painting. Here I added a little bit of lemon yellow just to brighten up spots of the green. And just darkening up that horizon line. And like I said, we will go back over it when it's dry and make it a bit sharper. Okay, so now we're just gonna wait for it to completely dry and then we will move on to our second layer. For my drying, I use a heat tool. This is my heat gun and it just dries it a lot faster. But if you also have a hair dryer, you can put it on a low setting, a low hot setting, and it will do the same thing. Okay, so now I'm just going over my horizon line with my green again. So as you see, because I am doing wet on dry, it's a sharper line. And I'm just blending it out. So I wash off my brush, I dry it on my paper towel, and I blend out that line so it's not so harsh coming down into the grass. And I'm just mixing up a bit more of that darker green. So I use Hooker's Green Dark and Dioxazine Purple. And it just makes a really nice dark green. Again, just going over that horizon line and just adding some lines where the wet paint or the wet background um, where it's already wet in the background, you know what I mean. <laughs> and just letting the watercolor kind of bleed out. Okay, so now I took a bit more of that indigo and Payne's gray, and I'm just making some sharper clouds. And you really want them to be loose. You don't want them to be, you know, too structured. Just, I'm tilting my brush. I'm kind of using the side of the belly of my brush and just being very, very loose with it. And then as you see, I put my brush in the water and I just added a bit of clean water to soften those edges just a bit. So I put some darker clouds towards the horizon and at the top and I'm leaving some of that white area. And now I'm going back in with a bit more darker pigment and just adding a bit more shadow to those already wet areas. So now I'm just going to wash off my brush and dry it again and soften out those dark parts. You don't want them too dark and sharp. So 
always wash off your brush, dry it a bit, and soften those edges out. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my heat tool and start the drying process. Okay, so now that it's dry, I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to use some darker um, paints gray and I'm, start, I'm gonna start to paint my trees. So to paint the trees, do it with a light wash of the paints gray first so it looks like they're further in the background and you're just gonna draw some vertical lines with the tip of your paintbrush and then some little kind of jagged horizontal lines going down that middle of the tree. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just be really rigid with your movements. I find when it's too um, straight and symmetrical, it doesn't look as natural. And I'm also going in with that really light wash and creating some birds, just a little kind of flattened out V shape. Okay, and now that those first trees are done and they're dried, I am going back in with darker pigment this time. And I'm just doing the same thing again, but these trees look like they're more in the foreground because they're darker. So again, making those vertical lines and then really jagged horizontal lines coming down. I forgot to show that I added some red specks to the foreground and those are just to act as poppies. So just be really loose with it, small red dots. And that's about it. And now while those trees are still wet, I'm just taking my damp brush and I'm just blending out the bottom of where those trees are. So they kind of cast a tiny bit of a shadow and blend into the ground. And now I'm just adding a small bit of greenery to where those flowers are in the foreground. Just little lines as stems and just little dots, maybe as like some green leaves, but nothing too specific. Just pop a little bit more green in there. And then you can even add a bit of shadow towards the bottom, just a little bit more pigment and blending it out. And really that's all there is to it. So there is your first loose landscape painting. Okay, so for our second landscape painting, we are doing the same kind of thing wet up that background make sure you have a nice light sheen um, and the water's not dripping everywhere so i'm going to be creating um, a nice blue sky so i'm just going in i think with my cobalt blue and again just placing it um, randomly around the sky being very very loose with it i think i grabbed a bit of turquoise you can mix blues have darker ones lighter ones and just start placing it on that wet background and let it bleed out. I'm also gonna drop in some clean water to some areas to hopefully get some water blooms. Now, because I'm using Arches paper, it, it's actually harder to achieve those blooms that are usually a mistake when you use um, cheaper paper. So I'll show you the technique I use to actually get some of those more defined blooms. But for right now, I just put some clean water in there and then I grabbed some more Payne's Gray and just added some darkness to the top. Now I'm just trying to decide what color I want to use for the mountains. <laughs> so I'm just mixing some Opera Rose and some blue that I had there to make a nice light purple. And I'm going from the bottom up, just a nice light wash to start. And now we are going to dry it. Now, the way I'm drying it, because I said I wanted those blooms, while I'm drying the areas, I'm adding some clean water to some of those areas. This is just going to create an unevenness with the drying, and it's going to create those blooms that, in a lot of cases, we don't always want. Um, but here, because it's more of a loose style, it's acting as clouds. So I'm just running my heat tool over the area, dropping some clean water so it's really wet, so it's drying the area without as much water, 
a bit faster and the one with more water a bit slower and it's creating these really cool patterns. Now, like I said, if you don't have a heat tool, um, you can just use a hair dryer and it should work very similar, just on a low setting, a hot setting, but low air, just so it's not blowing your paper everywhere. Okay, so now that I'm done drying it, I'm just gonna take a light wash of that purple mixture that I mixed before, and I'm gonna create some very light mountains. Again, look at the angle of my brush. I'm using the side of my brush with the tip kind of creating those jagged mountains, but just being very loose with it, kind of like stiff in your hand almost, so it makes it a little bit more um, rigid. And then I'm just bringing it down a bit and then adding a bit more pigment to the top of those mountains. Now we're gonna let it dry. Okay, so now that it's dry, we're moving on to our second layer of mountains. I'm just mixing a bit more pigment. So I think I used Payne's Gray and um, some of that Opera Rose so pink. Um, and you're just making it a little bit darker than those first mountains. And again, just doing some jagged mountains with the side of your brush and using that tip. Um, and you can go whatever way you want with this. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. And you're just gonna drag it down a bit. Just blend it out. And then we're gonna wait for this layer to dry. Okay, so now that it's dry, again, we are gonna mix more of that color with the pink and the paint's gray and do our next layer of mountains, making it slightly darker than the last. And while those areas are still wet, as you can see, I added some trees, doing the same kind of trees as I did in our last painting, but just starting off with the dark color, the vertical lines with the rigid horizontal lines, and I'm just dragging it down, and I'm adding some darker pigment in those trees and bringing it all the way down to the bottom of the painting. You can just place in some darker pigment too in random spots just to get a bit more texture, and really, that's all there is to this painting. Okay, and last but not least, we are on to our last um, loose landscape, doing the same kind of thing, wet up the background, make sure it's not too wet and it's not dripping everywhere. We're speeding this one up just a tad because it is a little bit repetitive. Now I'm leaving a little bit of a white circle um, for a sun area and we're going in with some cadmium yellow. Then I'm taking some opera rose, which is a really nice kind of neon pink and we're gonna put it at the top and then blend it in a little bit with that yellow. And obviously it creates kind of an orange. So this is gonna be a really nice pink, orange, yellow sunset. Okay, just blending it together, taking a bit more of that opera rose and I'm gonna add it also to the horizon line. So bringing it down, leaving that yellow mostly around where the sun is. And I just lifted up a bit of that paint for where the sun is because I wanted it to be kind of pure white and again, just blending it. Now I'm adding just a bit more darker magenta towards the top, because as you get towards the top of the sky, it gets a bit darker. And I'm just doing that same technique that we did in the last one with my heat tool, and I am adding some clean water and having it dry with the heat tool so it creates those really cool watermarks and blooms. So add that water and then start to heat um, around it to dry it out. So you can see in this one especially those really cool funky patterns. Okay, so now I'm just mixing up that purple again with the Payne's Gray and the Opera Rose and doing the same kind of mountains. It's a little repetitive, I know, but change up the color of these sceneries and you know you get something different. So again, we're starting with that first lighter background and then we're gonna let that dry. Work on our second set of mountains on the dry background with our slightly darker pigment for the foreground mountains. Again, just blending it out a bit more to the bottom. 
let that dry, and then go for the even darker mountains in the foreground. And once again, adding those little trees to either side of the painting with the same color as the closest mountains to the foreground. And honestly, that is about it. So really, there's tons of different variations you can do with these really loose watercolor landscapes. You can create kind of like a sunset on a beach, making palm trees. Um, I would just use, again, that really dark color for the foreground. And palm trees are quite easy. You're just making a stem kind of coming up on a slanted curve, larger at the bottom, smaller towards the top, and then creating small curved leaves and then just small little lines coming off those leaves. Make sure they're slightly curved so they look a bit more realistic and they're not just like straight edge. They curve with the shape of the leaf, if that makes sense. But really, that's about it. You can do tons of different variations, like I said, of these landscapes, but just relax, put on some fun music, and enjoy. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.